What is up guys, I'm back with another video and if you haven't seen my previous video with the unboxing and first impressions of the iPhone 6, I'll leave that in an annotation around the video somewhere so you can check that one out. But it's about time we give the iPhone 6 the full review treatment. And before I jump into the video, I just want to say a huge thanks again to Ramstech for providing this iPhone 6 for me to make this video for you guys. The first major difference you'll notice when you look at the iPhone 6 is of course the larger screen. So we now have a 4.7 inch display with a resolution of 1334 by 750. This brings it in at just over 720p and while it might seem a bit on the mid-range side if you are considering flagship Android phones have 1080p displays and even 2K displays, in reality it actually retains the 326 ppi that we've seen on previous iPhone models. So if you're coming from one of those, this doesn't really change much. As mentioned in my unboxing and first impressions, the first thing you feel when you actually take the phone out of the box is just how extremely thin it is, 6.9mm thin. If you take a look at it next to something like the Nexus 5, the thickness isn't much of a difference, but when coming to the feel in hand, these two devices are very very different. The iPhone 6 feels a whole lot thinner and actually makes the Nexus 5 seem as though it's a bit more on the bulky side, and this is all due to the rounded edges on the iPhone 6 whereas the Nexus 5's edges are a bit sharper. These rounded edges really emphasize the thinness of the phone and actually makes it feel a lot thinner than it really is. If you were to take your finger and pass it around the phone, you would notice that the glass on the screen curves perfectly into the edges and you literally cannot feel any separation. This really gives the entire device a perfect unibody feel in the hand. This curved glass also makes it much more comfortable to use the swipe back feature introduced in iOS 7. Previously with the iPhone 5 and 5S, you would generally feel the edge of the device when using swipe back. However, with this new curved glass, it makes everything a much more seamless experience. As for the button layouts and taking a quick look around the device, on the left side here we have the volume up and down buttons as well as the hardware switch for the vibrate toggle. On the right we have the SIM tray which holds a nano SIM and the power button which was relocated from the top of the device. This makes a lot of sense because let's face it, putting the power button on the top of a device with a 4.7 inch display might be a bit inconvenient for some. <coughs> There's absolutely nothing on the top and on the bottom we have a 3.5mm headphone port, microphone, lightning cable connector as well as the speaker. As I mentioned in the unboxing and first impressions video, I was really impressed by the speaker as it was amazingly loud and its quality was excellent. In terms of clarity, it was almost up there with the boom sound speakers found on the HTC One. Be that as it may, it's still one single speaker and it's easily covered up when holding the phone in landscape, which can be quite annoying when gaming or watching a YouTube video. On the back we have our iconic Apple logo, a two-tone dual LED flash as well as a protruding camera, which protrudes just enough to make the phone not sit flush on a flat surface. One thing that really bothered me about the iPhone 6 was the screen size to device size ratio. For example, the Nexus 5 on the iPhone 6 is approximately the same physical size, but while the iPhone 6 packs a 4.7 inch display, the Nexus 5 packs an almost 5 inch display. This is of course due to the Touch ID sensor at the bottom, which gives the device a rather huge chin and of course Apple has to put a matching forehead for the chin. Regardless of all of that, the iPhone 6 is still one of the first devices I've held that actually felt perfect in the hand. And while it doesn't feel as premium as the 5 and the 5S, in my opinion that is, the curved edges still fit really nicely in the hand and feels very comfortable. The Touch ID sensor sits right below the display, and of course it was expected with the iPhone 6, but this time it's much faster and much more accurate. Ever since it was introduced, it was a much more convenient way of keeping your device secure as opposed to using a passcode. And now it's even more convenient as recognition is almost instant. The software on the iPhone 6 is obviously iOS 8 and it brings a lot of improvements and new features. For instance, we have reachability which you'll get to in a while, continuity and handoff which you'll see coming with OS X Yosemite, third party keyboards and much more general improvements. iOS 8 isn't perfect, it still needs a bit more ironing out and I'm sure you remember the 8.0.1 update that actually rendered most of the devices useless. But Apple was quick on the trigger to fix that problem and now it's just up to the third party developers to update their apps to suit the new screen size. Oh and the lag when launching Spotlight Search is completely gone on iOS 8, just a side note. I personally think it's taking a bit longer than usual for third party developers to get their apps suited for the new screen size. Especially for well known apps, for example the status bar overlays the action bar in the YouTube app on iOS 8, causing you to have to maneuver around it if you want to hit any of those buttons. Even major apps like Facebook aren't optimized for the larger screen just yet, so right now it's just scaled up causing all the fonts and content to look just a bit fuzzy or blurry. Hopefully the third party developers will get on this soon and start optimizing their apps for the new screen size. While we have the ability to use third party keywords in iOS 8, 
the included keyboard is much more functional than previous versions. We now have the new predictive text or predictive suggestions, but as mentioned in the previous video, some of these suggestions are really weird. For the users coming from the 5 or 5S or even lower, Apple has included a new feature called Reachability. And what this does is allow you to double touch the Touch ID button, not press, just double touch the Touch ID button, and it brings the entire screen halfway down so you can comfortably reach the four corners with one hand. This will come in extremely handy if you're accustomed to small displays or even if you're accustomed to 4.7 or 5 inch displays and decided to get the 6 plus. Moving on to the camera, while it might be a bit disappointing for some, we have an 8 megapixel shooter sitting at the back of the device right next to the two tone dual LED flash. But keep in mind that megapixel count is not everything. The iPhone 6 has an all new sensor with 1.5 micron pixels. This is just a bit smaller than the pixels on the HTC One, which are actually 2 microns and they call this the ultra pixel. The UI isn't much different from what we've seen on iOS 7, so swiping to the left we can go to slow-mo, which can record at an undeniably impressive 240 FPS. And this is extremely impressive for a smartphone. We can also swipe over to the new time-lapse mode, and this was only included with iOS 8. There's also the familiar live filters, as well as basically everything else introduced with iOS 7. With iOS 8, the camera app itself got some new updates, one of those being manual exposure control. So after touching to focus, you can just slide your finger up and down to control the exposure of the image. And also I have absolutely no idea why this wasn't included in any version of iOS before, but we now have a self timer for the camera. And as usual, you can hit the button on the top right to switch between the front and rear facing camera. The images taken with the iPhone 6 look really really clear and sharp, and this is due to the excellent image processing being done by the iPhone 6 itself. As for performance, the iPhone 6 has a 1.4GHz dual-core processor paired with 1GB of RAM. And while that may seem like it's on the lower end, due to how good Apple is at optimizing its OS to work with just the necessary hardware, the iPhone 6 performs exceptionally well. Multitasking is no problem and the UI is snappy as usual. There are a bit of lag here and there, but that's due to iOS 8 being a relatively young operating system. Over time as it matures, definitely performance will smoothen out and only then we will see the real performance of the iPhone 6. But overall, the device performs generally well, and if you've been waiting on the right time to upgrade, now is definitely that time. If you're an Android user and you've been wanting to switch to iOS for a while now, but you couldn't live with the smaller screen size, then now is definitely the right time to go and get yourself an iPhone. Just kidding, keep your Android phone. Anyway guys, that's been it for this video. Thanks for watching, and if you liked it, feel free to hit that thumbs up button, and if you aren't a subscriber already, feel free to do so now, and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.